uh, HSBC has just released its composite PMI data for India and the reading has improved to 49.5. Manufacturing seems to be the stable ground while we continue to see contraction as far as the services industry goes. That also, however, seems to be easing. To talk about that, joining me is Laif Eskinson, the chief economist for India and ASEAN at HSBC. Laif, always good talking to you. Thanks so much for joining us today. Let me start off with that PMI data. You know, like we're seeing, we're seeing some bit of relief as far as manufacturing activity goes. However, contraction as far as services seems to continue. That has also started easing. Uh, would it then be right to say that we're seeing some sort of, you know, bottoming out as far as the worst for the economy goes? Yeah, I think it's probably fair to say that, you know, things are, are stabilizing and, and we are sort of seeing the, the economy uh, bottoming out based on the, the PMI readings we've had, not just here in April, but I think if you look at the average PMI reading during the first four months of the year and compare them uh, to the sort of uh, last, uh, should say, October, December quarter of 2013, there certainly has been some slight uptick on, on, on that front. That's quite clear from the numbers. At the same time, I mean, we're also looking at a relatively moderate pace of growth uh, in the manufacturing sector still. Uh, the services sector, as you also indicated, uh, also points to still quite subdued growth, right? So I think, uh, although there might be sort of signs of a stabilization, I think it's going to be quite a while before we see more notable signs of an outright, you say, recovering growth. And the reason for that is that we still have of course, structural constraints in place uh, related to infrastructure and a lack of economic reforms. Uh, partly related to that, you know, inflation still remains high. That's also a deterrent for growth. Uh, and there's also, in some sense, uh, issues with other imbalances in the economy. Uh, corporate leverage is quite high. Uh, banks are still experiencing, we say, deterioration in, in asset quality. So those factors will still, in a sense, continue to pose headwinds uh, to growth. Life, you know, the big queue that we're watching out for here in India, of course, uh, are those election results due May 16th. Uh, the economic manifesto, if you look at most of the parties, they seem to be almost identical in, uh, in that thrust as far as uh, revival goes. That seems to keep the markets a bit buzzing at this point. But are you optimistic of this growth or do you have apprehensions that any real reform could really take off? Well, I think so from a purely macroeconomic perspective, I think it's very, very important not to overestimate the implications of the elections in the short term, uh, but at the same time not underestimate the implications for the real economy over the medium term. What I mean by that is it's going to be difficult for a new government, uh, even with a strong mandate and the will to change, to really change things on the ground uh, very expeditiously. Because what needs to change in India to turn, she would say, the growth story is deeper rooted structural reforms. And we all know it takes a while before you build consensus on these, before they get implemented, and ultimately before they have an impact on the real economy. Even, she would say, investment projects uh, that have been stalled, it would also take uh, a while to get them up and running. Some of them also stalled at the state level, so there's not necessarily that much in the short term that a new government can do on that front. So I'm, I'm quite optimistic that things will change post-elections, but it would take time. I think the recovery post-elections will be quite protracted, and I think that's important to keep in mind. Sure. But according to you, is India's economy looking any better? You know, we've, we've been tracking FI inflows into India. That continues being muted. So do you really expect that will pick up going forward? Uh, you know, gradually, I think, you know, I think, you know, we, you've seen some optimism in, in the run-up to the elections as far as inflows are concerned uh, into India. Um, and I think that that is, is based on assumptions that things would change post-elections. I, I expect they will do, but I just said on, on the real economic side, it would take a while before we see the fruit of new reforms actually kicking in and, and turning around the economy. So we're still looking at growth, for example this year just uh, slightly north of, of, of 5% on so the low fives, 5.3% 5 to, be, to be more exact. So as, as I said, it's, it's a very protracted <clears throat> recovery in the, in the very short term. Sure. So the next logical question, of course, is what sort of targets you are expecting for the rupee, especially as we're counting down to May 16th. You know, uh, we're getting a, a range of anything between 50 to 70 for the rupee at this point. What would your own target be? Well, I think, you know, here in the short term, in the run-up to the elections, of course, uh, the, the, the currency has found uh, some support. Uh, again, it's based on the hope for change post-elections. 
You could also say at least in the beginning parts of 2014, the U.S. economy was sputtering a little bit. I mean, that's changing a bit now. Uh, but we probably still, I would say, if you look a bit further ahead to the year, to the second half of 2014 calendar year, looking at uh, some maybe retracement in the current and some weakening against the, the U.S. dollar. Some of that uh, would also be not so much, as you say, an India-specific story, but maybe more, as you would say, affirming of the underlying dollar story that would play out. So we're still looking at 62 against the U.S. dollar by the end of uh, 2014 calendar year. I have you know, one final question, and uh, we are looking at a very data-heavy week next week. We have the CPI data. We have IP that we're watching out for. Uh, we continue to see worries as far as the monsoon goes. So what do you think you know, the government should really be doing, especially the RBI? We're, of course, looking at the monetary policy announcement on the 3rd of June. So how does the government and the RBI keep inflation lower? Well, I think the prescription for, for keeping inflation lower is it, it has to be a relatively broad-based bazooka, I would say, as far as policy response. So you have to keep monetary and fiscal policies tight. I think fiscal policy has to be tighter than it is now. You have to continue with fiscal consolidation, in other words. I think there's also room to actually tighten monetary policy a bit further from here on. Uh, so that would also be important. But I think a key thing, of course, is to address, should we say, the bigger structural elements that you have now to the inflation story. And that's where these deeper-rooted structural reforms have to kick in. I mean, that's both economic reform and liberalization of the economy that can help, should we say, improve productivity. And that's, of course, also uh, dealing with the bottlenecks in the economy. That would also be important for, should we say, the inflation story, both food inflation story and the non-food inflation story. So it really has to be a relatively broad-based policy response to bring inflation under control. In the more near term, as you alluded to, of course, uh, inflation story in the, in the short term uh, hinges on what happens uh, over the summer. Are we going to get an adverse supply impact from the El Nino, which seems to be the case, and that, of course, poses upside risk to inflation uh, in the near term. From the RBI's perspective, uh, maybe they're not going to be quite ready to raise policy rates uh, here in June. Maybe they want to wait to see what, what happens with El Nino, what uh, kind of impact we're going to get on food inflation and what kind of transmission we're going to have when it comes to uh, second-order impact on, on, on the rest of, of the inflation story there before they're ready to move. So maybe we have to move into the second half of calendar year 14 before RBI will begin to, to hike rates again. But I certainly think there is a need to, to, to tighten monetary policy uh, somewhat further.